So thank you all for coming here to SP Digital. Uh, thank you. Firstly, thank you for surviving the rain um, and for coming here. Um, the title of this talk is Creating More Value, value Out of Your Mobile Automation Test. So the theme today, as you can see, um, is about development practices and craftsmanship. Talking about craftsmanship, this is a photo of me holding a cleaver. So I'm Kenneth. Um, here's my profile, um, email, GitHub page, um, me, my Medium blog and my LinkedIn profile. So I am a principal software engineer here at Singapore, uh, SP Digital. Um, so the parent company is SP Group. So we are an energy firm. Um, we are the ones that mainly focuses on the transmission and distribution of the energy. We don't really generate energy. So, um, so for me, I started my career as a Java developer and later had the opportunity to work on iOS development for the total of eight years. So my current work here in SP Digital currently focuses on the iOS mobile app development for SP Digital's consumer products. So for me, I like, um, I like to bring agile development um, software practices into the iOS development space. So things like TDD, BDD. Uh, I'm also a Tech Talk contributor in the iOS Dev Scout meetup group. So where I, so far I've only give two kinds of talks. So the first, the first category of talks is about hacking iOS apps. So where I showcase on a non jailbroken device, how do you actually inject code into iOS apps and mess things up. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. I, I showcase how um, with a Pokemon Go app, you can actually spoof your location and walk around without physically walking around. So the second group of talks that I give um, at the meetup is uh, mainly about testing. So, so the motivation for this talk, as you heard from Stanley, um, so actually we had a we we, we caught up one one um, a few months back um, over dinner and di uh, dinner and drinks. Um, both of us currently uh, we have new jobs. Um, so Stanley is now at uh, GovTech. I'm currently here just joined SP Digital a few months back. Um, so over dinner I shared where I left off. I'm still doing iOS development and and passionate about software practices. And along the way I shared some stories where I picked up some some um, concepts like mobile contract test and BDD. In addition, I also shared how I started to bring, help to bring these practices into, my into the current workplace of my current uh, employer, SP Digital. So, um, so Stanley told me, hey, why not give a talk at Agile SG? So I agreed. And I'm actually taking this opportunity to collect and pen down all my thoughts down as a talk so that uh, next time I can actually articulate the benefits to other people well. So I'm taking up this challenge. Coincidentally, I have also been selected to, to speak for the upcoming iOS developer conference. And the topic for that conference is Swift localhost testing. Um, very similar to the concept I'll be featuring um, later. So I'm taking the opportunity to cover some of the tips uh, on this topic without going too deep into the native code implementation. Um, so let me ask the audience, um, just want to profile you guys, um, how, many, how many of us are project managers? Project managers? Project managers? Okay, cool. Uh, what about engineers? How many engineers are there? One, two, three, four, five. Um, QA? QA? One, two. Okay, good. Um, so the topic, the topic of this um, talk is pretty catchy, but I just want to set the context here. Um, if we, we, this talk will be focusing on the perspective of a mobile app developer um, and I will be sharing my journey in the mobile app development space and some of the things I observed in mobile testing. So we have a very simple agenda. So I'll, I'll start off talking about mobile end-to-end -end tests, the current state, um, and some of the issues I've seen. Um, and then I'll, after that, I'll introduce two types of integration tests that you can probably bring back to your workplace. And then along the way, I'll showcase some demo. Um, I also introduce uh, BDD, how you can write some of these tests in the BDD format. So for the mobile development scene, 
um, Apple and Google launched their App Stores 2008, and then mobile development exploded. Mobile testing has always been a top, top priority. At bare minimum, companies are actually recruiting people to perform manual testing for the apps. For the automation test, um, um, mobile test framework has also caught up. Um, here are some of the, the popular ones. Um, for Android, there is uh, Expresso and Robotium. Um, for iOS, um, the, the de facto iOS automation tool will be uh, native automation tool is on Xcode. And for cross-platform, we have Calabash and also APM, which is uh, widely popular. OK, now on to mobile end-to-end -end test. So this is, this is um, the process of um, to assert that the mobile app client is properly performing in a particular environment. So in the whole process of building, um, to run the whole mobile test suite, uh, firstly, you have to build the app. And if you're building the app against, to test against a particular deep, um, environment, you have to, of course, configure your app properly. And then you start to create your artifacts, which is your APK for Android and your IPA files for iOS apps. And then from then on, um, you can actually do some automation tests on actual device. So you, you need to install those artifacts onto the device itself. Or you can actually use some of the emulators, like for Xcode simulators, as well as um, for the Android um, development studio. Of course, it's not just about building mobile apps. You, we will also need to build and deploy our mobile app dependencies, like your backend servers, your API gateways, microservices, if needed, as well as your databases. And all this, and it, it becomes more complicated because the app consumes services from a particular environment, and of course, expecting a certain state. So we also need to ensure that um, our environment states are refreshed or reset properly. And running the test suite takes a very long time. So firstly, you have to build, you have to deploy, you have to do that for the same thing for your backend, um, backend, servi backend services. And, the, and even the, the running of the, the test suite takes a long time. Um, many of the tests, can, it's going to be hard to actually run it concurrently. You have to um, set up teardown um, back in Property Guru, where I was from. Um, our mobile test suite took like five, six hours just to run most of the tests. Okay. So the challenge here for end-to-end -end tests is to try to make this whole process at least stable and repeatable. So for ownership, in most cases, um, in a lot of companies, um, a separate team is hired to develop, maintain, and own end-to-end -end tests. And for mobile engineers, um, they are mainly encouraged to just focus on unit testing and just develop the features. So seeing and showing the end-to-end -end test passed is very important. At, at the same time, very comforting because once you have the report that everything is tested green, we have more confidence that the entire use cases, the entire app can be work, will be working properly in production. But with that said, there are a handful of issues that um, many of you guys, um, it doesn't have to be for mobile, but you guys know that end-to-end -end tests are very fragile. So the mobile app itself has a lot of third-party dependencies, external dependencies. For example, um, if we have an app that um, talks to a service that uh, requires our OAuth authentication, you mean the app, we have to make sure that that third-party OAuth service is up. It's, otherwise, the app will, will, will break. At, at the same time, um, there could be some cloud storage services that the app, a lot of um, current mobile apps are using. Um, for example, iCloud or Firebase. And we, got, we have to make sure that these services are up as well. And not to forget our own API services. Um, we have to make sure that all, the, all these services are up. At the same time, we have to make sure that the, the database on the environment is in a particular state for us to actually begin testing. For example, if you want to test a login scenario, like John Doe logging in with this password, we need to make sure that the database state has these credentials being stored somewhere and ready to be used. And with that, we can't really test all cases. Um, a lot of time, um, 
from observation interviews, um, end-to-end test, uh, mainly sh a shared resource whereby multiple clients or even the back-end um, web clients are actually talking to the same resource. So there's a lot of contention of resources um, and we cannot really run um, some of the tests concurrently. And whenever we need to actually run um, to test all the edge cases, we may need to actually um, really change a lot of the individual components, changing the state. Uh, so of course, there's very long feedback loop, um, not just for the build time, the run time as well. And then of course, um, due to dependencies, we can't really, sometimes we can't really replay uh, some of the stuff, some of the test. Uh, for example, if we require to use a, a third party service that um, the team doesn't own, um, and it requires uh, a sign up flow, we can actually perform the test and do perform the sign up flow for once for a given username, but we may not be able to run it again because that service may say, hey, this person has really been registered. So of course, um, so end-to-end -end test has this, has, uh, has all these four above issues. At the same time, what I noticed is that a lot of end-to-end -end tests for mobile are actually written after the features are done up. So that means code has already merged. Who knows, there could be bugs, and we can only find out this quite late in the development cycle. So these are some of the issues um, and I've, I, I observed, um, especially at work. And this is our favorite testing, pa testing pyramid. So in this test pyramid, um, we have mainly three levels. The top will be the end-to-end -end test. The middle will be integration test. And the lowest level will be unit test. So generally, unit tests run faster than integration and and end-to-end uh, -end test. And that's where we want to have most of our testing over here. And as we go up the pyramid, we will be having less and less tests. Um, hopefully, the permutations or unit tests will cover most of what we have at the end-to-end -end test. So in most, or most organizations, mobile developers will, will just cover unit tests for their native code at a low level. And then we have probably a separate team that will actually write end-to-end -end tests for the mobile, mobile, um, for the mobile apps. Uh, so I'd like to share some stories with you um, that I have in my, in my previous company, Property Guru. So one of the, so one of the days or the evenings, um, the QA engineer came up to me, hey Kenneth, we spent six hours running the whole suite of mobile tests. Um, something broke, can you try to fix it? So of course I'm a very proud engineer, it can't be my fault. So I tried to, I tried, I tried to investigate and realized something, there's actually API breakage. So one of the API services have a change in schema that actually breaks the, breaks the um, mobile apps. So with that, I, 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 went back, I went to the backend engineer and told them, hey, why didn't you tell me? And then there's a, there's a long series of conversation where, hey I, hey, I didn't expect this, this change to break your apps. Um, or, or I feel I didn't need to tell you. Um, so that was, that was the experience I had. So that is API breakage. So another time, hey Kenneth, the end-to-end -end test failed. Um, so, um, so this test case is where um, in the property app, we go to the search form and then we select some, some of the criteria to search for properties like HDB condo, a price range, uh, a per square foot range. And at the results page, we are expecting a, very, a particular number of results. So the QA came over and kind of, um, we run through the test and the number is wrong. So of course, learning from the first ex from the first story, hey, it must be a back-end service problem. It's, it can't be me. So I, go, I went up to the, to the back-end engineer. Hey, I think you guys broke our test. But Kenneth, not this time. I've, we have not committed any code for the last four months. So okay, I went to investigate. What I had to do was to 
was to build my app pointing to the particular um, environment uh, and ensure of course all the dependencies are properly up so that I can run run the app and then later I realized that I actually have the bug on the on the app so what happens was um, doing the use case of selecting fields um, there was also some steps that resetted some of the fields and there was a bug where upon resetting some of the the search criteria wasn't being cleared. So when we send the payload, the query over to the server, we are actually sending the incorrect query. And that led to the incorrect results. So, um, so I was thinking, hey, I've, we, the mobile team has covered so many tests at the unit test level. Um, it's a good thing that the end-to-end, -end, um, the QA team has written a lot of end-to-end -end tests but for us to run, to get that feedback, six hours is actually a lot of effort and time is wasted. So how can we improve it? So, um, so I thought about it and then I, I came to, so this, I came to the conclusion that, hey, we are missing actually some, some integration tests in the middle. So what are these integration tests? So one, the first integration test that we were missing is contract test. So contract test is basically setting up the contract where the, um, how the, the server and client will interact with each other. So what we want to do is we want to lock down all these contracts so that if anything changes, we will be, we will be able to catch them before going production. So that's the first category. The second category would be uh, mock response test. Given that the environment is stable, it's all correct, can we actually run some tests to ensure that on the client, on the client side, everything's working as expected? So that's mock response test. So mobile contract test. So we have the mobile client and the server. So what we want to do is we want for a given use case, we want to assert that the environment, mainly the APIs that we consume, will actually behave properly. So we can actually generally what you would, this is how you would picture writing a series of curl commands in, in the command line and then fire it to the API. And of course, what we want to expect, we want to expect um, for positive use case, good flows, we want to expect status 200 at the minimum at the minimum. At the same time, we are also expecting that the response that we get are of a particular uh, matches the correct schema at the minimum. Otherwise, the app will break. So, um, and, and since we are just firing curl cows, we don't really need the mobile app itself. So what we are trying to do is, given a use case on the mobile app, we are trying to simulate the calls or the uh, URL requests and fire them in that sequential order in that particular payload to the server. And we, so we are, we are firing a ping, we expect a pong, not just any pong, but of a particular structure. So, uh, so the ass assertions are based on what the mobile apps are using. So it's not just, we're not just trying to test every endpoints in the, in the backend service only the ones consumed by the use case covered by the mobile apps. So with that, um, you can't have the external, the separate QA team owning this test because they don't know exactly what API calls we are firing. Because to them, the mobile test is, um, mobile testing is basically testing black box. Black box. So they may not be so aware of what are the little uh, web sockets or requests that the mobile apps are firing over to the server. Um, you can't, the backend team won't be able to write this. They are actually the ones that produce the, the web services. Um, they could produce like maybe 100 endpoints, but maybe only a subset are the ones consumed by the mobile team. And the mobile development team wants to lock this use case down. And of course, just by firing curl request, it's, it's actually quite fast and cheap. So me, myself, I like to write tests in behavior-driven, um, in BDD style. So where it's basically given and when and then. So there are many API testing services out there. 
free and paid. So this is the one I cho I've chosen. Um, it's a gem called Cucumber API. So this was written by uh, my pre my colleague in Property Guru. So we were we started off writing. We were playing around with this because we we started having this. Um, we worked on a testing framework called Calabash, which introduced Ruby to us, and we took the concept and hey, we can actually write um, you um, contract tests with that. So basically, what you see here is this is a scenario, and given there's no given over here, but we, there's a series of when and then where we where we fire a request over to the server, and then we expect it to be 200, and then we. And if need to, we actually inspect the, the contents of the, of the response. Uh, for example, getting the first, getting the list of, I think list of, list of stories, and then getting the first item in the payload, and then firing, and then the request to get the, the story at the, the response at the story item level. And then we, we moved on, and then we again assert that the status returns 200. And and some structure of the JSON. Okay. So let me show you what I have done. So um, so what I've done is actually I I tried to be a bit too smart. So I went online just to find a random iOS project, very simple iOS project. So and then I tr I tried to implement the the this contract test onto it. So let me first show you what this app is about. So let me build. You see here? Oops, sorry. Okay, okay so this is a very simple app. Um, as you can see, Maybe I, I drag this a bit. Okay, so as you can see, um, this basically um, is a simple, very simple app that lists out movies over here, and there are four. So the movies are represented as movies posters. Um, there are four tabs over here. This is popular. So this is upcoming um, movies, top rated, and now playing. Okay, so now playing. So let's say I would like to watch, um, I'm interested in this movie called Bohemian Rhapsody. So when I tapped on it, I come to a movie details page and these are the, this is what I see. So this is the use case for, for this app, uh, for, the, for today's topic. So this app will definitely cause an API. Um, I think it's, some movie, it's a movie database API. So, if of course, if the endpoint is down, or some or the schema has changed, we won't be able to see all the everything on on the app. So let's write a contract test. So I have written. So this is written in Cucumber. So in the home feature, um, similar to what I've shown earlier. Um, so when I send a GET request. Um, sent to this uh, API endpoint, and I use this query parameters, a, this API key, and this page, and then and at least I want to make sure that this response returns status code two hundred, at minimum, at minimum, and of course I want to I want to make sure that it um, the contents of this response conforms to this schema. So in this schema, it's movies.json. So this is the schema, schema over here. So I, I need to make sure that there is um, there's this page key that's of of type integer. Um, there's the results which is of array, and this is the the schema for the items in this array. Okay, um, and of course, um, at at minimum, this is the keys that must appear in this JSON at this level. So there's one call for for popular movies, and another API call, another scenario for upcoming movies. 
both both uh, conform to the same um, same um, JSON schema. So for movie movie details, um, I'm doing the same thing. Um, so what I do right now is to do the same API call. Um, I call popular movies. I make sure that the status is 200. And in the contents, I will actually iterate through the, the JSON um, in the, for the key array results. Um, for the first item, I'll try to grab the key ID. And I store it as a temporary, use a temporary variable called movie ID. And I do a subsequent API call. And this API call, I feed the, the value I stored over here into the last um, path of this API. And of course, I use the, um, I feed these two queries, these two values into the query parameters. And then after that, I do the same thing. I fire the API call and I want to ensure that the response returns 200 and conforms to this um, JSON schema. It's over here. Okay. So, there are, so these are two feature files. And of course, I, I, not of course, I created this last um, API call. So what happens is, um, I would also like to demonstrate like a certain post, um, post API calls. But for this project, it's all purely get. So what I did was to have just a button when I click, it actually fires a call. There's no um, UI change visible on screen. So for this post feature, I'm just basically firing a call to this API. And, I'm, and this is how I would describe the payload, rate and title, rate and ABC. And instead of um, just va validating the response by schema, I can also just um, validate line by line, ensure that the response of uh, the, the value of ID returns, has a value of 101, title, returns ABC, etc. So let's see all this in action. Oh, you want to take photo? Okay, okay so bundle, accept, cucumber. So now I run this. So I have total of four scenarios and it only took me four seconds. So I think previously in Property Guru, it took us about maybe five minutes, five minutes to run all our curl test. And we've just, so for in this case, with just four seconds, I have validated that, hey, the endpoint is, the dependencies are all ready, are all up and ready. So I can actually, I can tell the QA, if I have a, Q, a manual tester, I can tell the tester, hey, you can now pick up the phono test. If this is red, don't even bother because something's breaking. You won't be able to, to fully test all the test case. So of course, um, you can hook this up to your um, CI machine. Uh, so any questions about this? No questions? Okay, so let me continue on. Okay, so that's the demo for for um, API test. So, so what I've done um, in my previous company. It's contract test. Yes, contract test. You want to lock down the contract that the app will be using this, will be performing this request in this particular manner in this structure, and I'll be calling the API, and what is the results that I expect it to return. Sorry? Um, so I'm a fan of like, like BDD. So I like to write it in this way. So, um, so I, I'll come back to BDD Cucumber later. Yeah, because I have a few slides on that. So I implemented this. Um, and then 
one. And then the, there are guys who actually come up to me, uh, giving me this look. And who are they? They are the back end API team. So they're asking, Kenneth, what are you doing? Why are you writing tests? You know, why are you testing against my own API? I've already written tests about it. Everything's working fine. Why do you still have to test? Why are you supervising my work? You are not even, I'm not even reporting to you. We don't even have the same boss. But we are already writing stories. So this is something which I faced when I started off writing mobile contract test. Um, so the, so let me, let me start from the beginning. So um, I've experienced uh, many times where there was bugs on the phone. Um, the customer or the, or the end, end consumer complains that, hey, there's a bug on the phone. So okay, we try to investigate. And then we realize, hey, um, someone actually changed the schema. Um, and that causes a, a, a crash on the phone or a use case not working well. So okay, um, we, we did the triage. Okay, like we fixed, we fixed um, now we fix the app and then we push the production and then it happens again and again. So um, sometimes certain changes are not, um, we are not informed of the changes. Sometimes people did not expect that it might impact us because we are the consumers and we didn't even tell people that we are using certain API endpoints. They didn't expect us to use them. So, so I was quite fed up with it. Okay, let's, let's write some test. You know, I, I've heard of some stories where people talk about contract tests, um, where they're testing against like um, enterprise systems, where they need to make sure those systems are up and ready. So let's write contract test. So we wrote just a series of contract tests, um, and, all, and we actually, we execute them all on our laptops. So whenever, whenever we want to go to production, we just run the test, okay, good. But then things still keep breaking because people change after we push our mobile codes to production. So never mind. So, let's, um, so let me create a Jenkins job, a CI job, where it runs, runs the exact same thing. And um, whenever, so anybody has, has the ability, the option to just go into to Jenkins CI and then press the button and get the feedback. And, and then, and people only start to realize that um, the value of it when I think there was one or two major incidents. And then the mobile contract test, when somebody pressed the button, we were able to catch it. And overnight, everybody loved it. Before that, everybody was giving me this face and now everybody loves it. So, we'll go ahead. Uh, no, I'll actually, I'll come, I'll come to that. It's actually one of the points over here. So, so the mobile testers love it because all the, before they pick up the, your, the, the device, what they do, they just run the test. If it's not green, don't even bother. So they will only pick up the, the mobile devices only when it's green. Okay. So for, for mobile developers um, working with back-end back -end engineers, uh, we, can, we, we start to use this to actually lock agreements. So we're going to work on a new feature. We agree on a particular schema. So instead of waiting, uh, we, we don't know when they will be ready. So what we do, we just write a failing test. In every, and we run it every morning. Every morning it fails. We wait, wait, wait. The moment you see green, everybody's excited because, hey, we can start to integrate with them. So we can use mobile contract tests to lock um, agreements early, way early into the development cycle. Of course, I, I mentioned uh, we can actually create a CI job um, um, where we can actually run against any, any environment, even in production if you want to. Uh, so uh, coming to your point, um, soon because this, um, this contract test was so, um, everybody enjoys clicking it and they want to write it, someone actually um, suggested, hey, why not after the backend services are deployed, we just run a, a downstream hook and start this job. So now everybody f actually, f every backend engineer is free to merge the code and deploy. And after deploy, um, 
uh, this CI job will be run and we can a able to catch. So instead of um, trying to um, come to us and ask, hey, will I break your test? Just merge it. Of course, you can always have pull request hooks to actually validate this. Uh, but to, to actually prove the point, we started off with merging the code, post deployment, and run this test. And instantly, we get feedback. The moment somebody merges something that doesn't conform to um, what was agreed, we have a, we, we have a dashboard that shows um, an alarm. Okay. Uh, my next question is, so is, does the backend team take um, so because everything's automated, all they have to do is push. So coming to the to the third point, they what they can actually do is to um, they can actually run deploy their codes in a particular sandbox and then you run the, this, this test against that. You don't have to much to master. You can actually run some of these tests. Um, yeah. What if they add on new services? Do they take the responsibility of um, the contract test? No. No, because the contract test is what mobile apps are cons uh, mobile developers are writing codes to consume which services. So the backend services shouldn't need to care. Um, they will not be aware of of the endpoints that we are calling. Even if we are if we are calling that particular service, they may not be aware of which um, response keys that are very important to the to the use case. So with that, um, contract tests are running more frequently. So we, we run in almost every, every environment. And this is actually, the most important point is the last one. So even if you're a new company, you have no test, I think personally I feel that this is the lowest hanging fruit. You can actually write it in any language. You, can, you, you don't have to write it in Ruby, you don't have to write it uh, you can use. You can simply just write simple curl commands, and this this will give you the fast of all the things. Besides unit testing, but unit testing, there's of course there, there's some. You need to know how to write. You need to know how to mock. But this is actually very simple to write, any language. So I would recommend people, um, um, audience, if you don't have any, um, comp if you don't have any tests, try to at least try to get this done. If you're working with vendors, of course, this is, this is something you, you, want, you need to make sure that you want to have it there because sometimes vendors, they might be working for different clients, they might just break the contract, they might have a new API endpoint, they might deprecate certain services you may not be aware or you might forget. So having this contract test will save you way early into the, into the development cycle as well as when things break, uh, when the, the contracts break, you have the feedback. So here is um, somebody's breaking our build here in SP Digital. So one of the TVs over here is showing a lump. So um, it's not just about it's not just about having an alarm, a dashboard. So I actually spoke to some of my bosses that we need to enforce that whenever it's red, everybody have to stop work and to get it and to resolve it ASAP so that when someone checks out the code, everything's green or tests are passing. So um, this is actually an in-house uh, dashboard that um, uh, Sylvia's team um, worked on. Um, there's also an, another tool, a free tool called Nevergreen. That's a popular dashboard. So um, feel free to, to use dashboards at work. So mobile contract tests. Um, so nobody really cares about what the test you write. So, so my so the analogy for this is um, buying insurance. So like um, my dear friend, so let's say you're, you're, when you were younger, when you were younger, um, probably your dad told you, hey, um, son, I think you should buy some um, hospitalization insurance. Hey, but dad, I play football, I go to the gym, I'm all fit, nothing will happen to me. But the moment something happened to you, you would thank your dad for like, for, for giving you the advice. In fact, your dad probably has bought insurance for you. So writing tests is something like this. Nobody will really appreciate until shit hits the fan. And it's, um, and for, for us engineers, it's more important to try to make, try to create an environment to ensure that contributing to tests is easy so that it's no longer a chore for, 
people to write tests. Okay, that, so that is for mobile contract tests. So for contract tests, assuming that the app is working properly and behaving properly, um, and so given a use case, we fire this request, we want to assert that the environment is working as expected. So for mock response tests, we're actually trying to flip it the other way around. Okay, so given, so given that the, the API, the, the, the mobile app dependencies like the APIs are working properly, everything's okay. Can we assert that all the, the, for, the, for the given use case that the app is behaving properly? So, um, so by doing this, we try to create an environment where, where for mobile testing, the app is decoupling itself from its external environment. So one way to get to to um, to run mobile response mock response test is to use a localhost server. Um, you can there's a, a lot of um, a lot of stacks. There's no Python Ruby. You can actually create your own easily create your own localhost server. And ideally, what so for mobile app development? So why not? Um, ideally, you also want to write and create an in-memory localhost server for each test case. Um, of course, for mobile app, you want to use the native mobile mobile app programming language. Um, you want to make sure that when you want to when you create or start up the localhost server, it's all in line in your test case. Um, by doing so, you can actually for each test case, you can actually stop the 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 server with the expected responses uh, according to your use case. So I mean, I'll, later I'll come to that. So the whole idea is we want to have, want to make uh, test, this kind of test repeat, repeatable and replayable. And by doing so, we have total, total control of the environment um, because we can describe um, any mock response that we want. Okay, of course, it, yes. Okay. And uh, we just read the uh, data from the button JSON button first, uh -huh. and then use that as a response, and we can uh, have multiple JSONs to uh, uh, correct. Yep. Have multiple uh, sorts of expected responses, and oh, yeah. we can then assess how the app would respond. Okay. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be much more preferred over say? Uh, correct. So that is one way of testing. But by doing that, you're actually changing the internals of how the app works. There's actually a particular path in your codes that doesn't get run in production. Uh, no, so we can actually have, we have test cases now, don't we? Unit test, yep, unit right. test uh, targets. So we can, we can include a JSON file inside the bundle for the unit tests alone. Yeah, okay, unit tests, yes. So that is one way, um, but for this case, what we want to do is um, for for this for mobile apps, what we usually have or for software, what we have is a configuration file where it will tell us um, which services, which endpoint we want to consume. So what we want to do is actually to to have a different configuration file, and then we package that configuration file into the build, but we don't change any binary. And yeah, but in the whole, the, the actual use case, the app is um, because that actually maybe you're using a library actually picks up, it doesn't hit the the TCP connection. Ah, yes, it does not touch yeah, correct. the connection itself. It's just correct. for testing the responses to the JSON. Correct, correct. So in this case, we want to make sure that we, we, the in the test, it also hits the TCP connection, but we don't really care where, we don't really care so much about um, which endpoint it is. 
when we hit the endpoint, we, we only care about when the endpoints, when we hit this endpoint, it gives us this response. So is, this is actually two different approach. Maybe we can talk about it later. Okay. Um, so maybe. I'm, I'm just curious. It's just a question. So, uh, is it quite similar to that? Or, uh, uh, yeah, that's what you're saying. Okay. You, both are actually very similar approach, but one is with server, one is serverless. Yes. So the serverless approach is basically they still hit an endpoint, but then there is a depends on how they do it. Mm -hmm. Because when you hit an endpoint, you actually you don't even need to hit the real one. It can be fake. Okay, so, so what is the question? Okay, so, 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 okay, so, does have any sort, any sort of over that? so um, I, I can pick, I can think of one advantage that you have because you do because you don't really require a server. Um, so you can actually run everything concurrent. Am I correct? You yes, can, you can run it everything con concurrent. So whereas for this case, we are running, um, we need a server. Um, so if we run it locally uh, with one local host, even with the, we can split up into pods, uh, we may or may not be able to run it um, concurrently. Yeah. I know because when we run a use case, we expect certain response. And for another use case, um, if, we, if we run two test cases concurrently, we hit the same endpoint, um, one, one test case might pass and then one will fail. Mm -hmm. I, see, I see both of these is uh, different scope yeah. of tests. One scope is larger, which includes uh, the mock server mm -hmm. itself, and one is a uh, small, narrow uh, scope. Um, I find out of uh, iOS in, in web development backend as well, I find um, this increasing the scope is useful to catch any side effects where the existing code do not have much unit tests, uh, poor, poor uh, test automation as well. And we need to kind of uh, get some uh, coverage without changing too much of the internals or breaking dependencies, which is very tedious. You so know what, actually, just for asking this question, I'm just answering my own questions. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. Thank you. So, um, so of course, we need to configure the app to point to, um, to the local host um, and also point to a specific ports. Um, and because of this, you may need to disable like, SSL pinning, which in your case, you probably don't have to because you're not hitting the, the HTTP, TCP layer. Yeah. And of course, test cases may have to be manually set up um, um, in the test case, inline the test case, and you might need to set up um, the local host server with specific mock response to be able to test out um, to test out the um, the use case. So, so on top of this, so one, so maybe maybe this can actually um, can. Uh, can respond to your question. So one more good thing about having a mock, mock server is that given that I have um, the environment is, is working properly and I'm behaving properly, I'm getting this response. At the same time, throughout my whole use case, I'm firing a, re a request back. 
and because I'm firing back to, to the local server, I can actually assert this, the app is behaving properly and I'm sending the correct payload to the server, back to the server. So I find this is actually very, very useful because in one of the earlier description about um, where I'm actually at the, in, in the app, in the search criteria page, if I don't have, because I don't have this, I wouldn't be able to assert that I'm sending out the one request back to the server. So with a localhost server, you can actually capture a request. Yeah. I think I just asked some, some really stupid question after you just said this. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. Okay, so, um, so one cool thing about this, um, it, um, which um, I will probably cover in the developer conference, is that um, you can actually assert some of the outgoing requests by third-party apps used in your app. So because I'm, because I'm into hacking, so I'm able to actually capture all other requests sent out by the apps, which are not owned by you. So I actually use this to actually assert Google Analytics request. So given a use case, we're actually sending certain um, Google Analytics um, requests to the server to capture like um, page views, screen views. I can actually use, use the same technique to actually capture, um, to make sure that when I'm throughout this whole use case, that um, throughout those use, use case, I'm making sure that the events are sent to Google and Analytics in that particular order. So, but I, I don't have a demo for this. So, let me show. Go back to the Xcode. Okay, so, you, so we have seen the. So we have seen. Um, oops, sorry. Okay. So we have seen uh, the, Q, the the contract test, and now let's let me first show you uh, mock response test. So it's the so so the test. I, I, I like I like BDD, so I'm I'm also writing it this way. So let's say let's start with this this test scenario. So given I'm on the home screen, and then when I tap on the upcoming. Uh, upcoming button on top and then I assert that I should see this um, I should I assert that I should see um, this poster 7 daily scheme prisoner sky at cell 1 and then I should see the equalizer at cell 2 so this is just a simple scenario that I described so for mock response what I what I've done, I've actually I I've actually ensured that um, I'm pointing to localhost, and then I, I have some steps where I describe. Hey, given that if that um, for this endpoint, um, for a, a get request hitting this endpoint, please return this response upcoming, home upcoming, which is over here. So this is the JSON that I'll be returning over here. So as you can see, it's not a lot of them. So I actually removed a lot of uh, items and there's only two movies over here. The upcoming. So when I hit popular, popular is the first tab and I will return the JSON response home popular. And then the, the last one is just for the extra use case where I tap on the button and fires a post request. So this is the list of movies. Um, so in in BDD in Cucumber, we um, when we write feature files, we can actually tag the the scenarios or the features. So in this case, I'm at, I'm going to run all the scenarios that are tag demo. So in this movie details feature. Movie details feature. Um, so this is the use case. Given I'm home screen, and I tap on the movie poster equalizer too, then I should be on the movie details screen. And then next, I would I would expect to see these strings on the on the screen. 
Okay, so I let me run the test. Okay, let me run the test. So I'm running this test demo. Hopefully, pass. Okay, so the first one has passed. You can see that you can see the details over at the bottom right corner. So I tap on equalizer. I said these are the strings on screen. So, so this is the part where um, for localhost testing you can actually assert um, because throughout this whole request I'm actually firing at least one time to homepopular.txt so I want to make sure at the end sorry I'm, I'm firing this series of requests and the server will actually record all the requests comes, coming to the server and then uh, and the last and for that step whoops I actually want to make sure that hey, um, the server request matches with this file. So there, there are various ways to actually assert the request. So for me, what I've done, just for this demo, simply is to convert the request into a curl command. And then I just have to compare strings. So home popular one. So these are the curl requests. So for the home feature, we come in, we load popular movies, so we fire one request for popular, so this is the curl request. And then we tap on the second, uh, second tab upcoming, and this is the second request. For movies detail, um, movies detail, so we, uh, movies details one dot, so when we come in, we load the. So when we come in, we load all the movies. But because um, this this app is designed such that whenever we capture the movies, we actually store in a database so that we don't hit that, we don't call the API service again. So there's an absence of that call. And then when we hit because the, in the first JSON that we we sent, this is the this is the ID of the movie. So I'm very specific that I'm going to hit this endpoint and nothing else. So I assert that this, um, this is the curl request that's been called. Yeah. So that's about it. So there's one more test case, um, which is, um, I take a demo post, which is, which is this little button. This button actually does nothing but does a post call. So, um, so this, so you can see, after I perform the two actions, going to popular and I'm coming, when I hit that button, I'm actually doing a post call. And this is the, the post request that's been called, the, the, curl, rec the curl command that's been generated. Yeah. So, and any questions about this? Ah, go ahead. Uh, this question is more like a gray area of responsibility. So, who do you think is the most suitable for writing this demo of text? I feel that mobile engineers. Yeah, I also agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Because, because no, nobody they, else knows about all this. Yeah, that's exactly. If a QA were to write this kind of level of text, right, they actually need to know how the underlying code yeah, communicates correct. with the components. Correct. And Yeah, so at minimum, at least the, well, actually the QA can actually pair with the engineers if they're working together. That also works. Uh, which I actually um, encourage so that the, the QA team knows more, more than just, a, they know more about how it works and maybe it can give them, uh, it may give them insights on how to test properly because it's not just a black box. If you just think of a black box, there's too many permutations. Knowing certain things help to maybe narrow down the test.
Uh, yeah, so so this library that I've chose chosen, actually given a talk on, on using this cucumber library, is very specific to iOS. Uh, but um, the cucumber is um, quite a popular um, testing framework. So there's there's probably. Correct. So for Cucumber, Cucumber, we have all the steps, all the English sentences, and for each sentence, you need to, you need to express, find a way to express that as a APM step. So this lecture to introduce this, if you want to do this Cucumber for APM, you actually introduce another layer. So, um, so actually, setting up. I think it will be more complicated because this is adding, you have to, we have, more, you have one more layer, there's more things to set up. Yeah, okay. Yep. So this this definitely more work to be done, but later I have slides to actually encourage people to hey, try out BDD. So I'll come to that soon. Okay. So let me return back to my slides. Hey, and then we are back. So. So now I've done I've done this for my previous company and also for here SP Digital. But then I meet our friends here again. Uh, but who are they? Now they're they're not they're not the API engineers. They're actually a QA team. So you're asking, Kenneth, I'm actually writing end-to-end -end tests, writing almost the same actual same test as what you're doing. So why are you are you trying to make us redundant? I mean, come on, you 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 already pick up a fight with the back-end team. Now you want to pick up a fight with us? Come on. So the thing is, um, this test is not meant to replace end-to-end -end test because for end-to-end -end test, we, there's a lot of um, skill involved to make sure the environment is ready for the, for the, mobile, for the test mobile app to actually execute. So end-to-end, -end, the, 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 so especially the team that manages the end-to-end -end test, there's a lot. Of, it's not just the mobile apps. They need to ensure um, that we need to maybe speak to ensure that the DB is properly refreshed. They may need to actually book timing for that, schedule a refresh or database, schedule different things to make sure that everything is ready before we can test. So um, they may not be able to run our tests. Um, mock response tests can help them to cover all of them. And it's meant to complement, and both sets of tests are meant to complement each other. Okay, now, so why use BDD? So, so this, is, uh, this is the feature file which I showed earlier on. So in most tests, um, you write in your native language, you will, ha you will have a lot of um, lines of code that describe how you're going to set up, how you're going to mock, um, a lot of codes around where at first look, it doesn't bring out the value. So why BDD? Because what, how you want to, to write it, you want to express the value out of the use case. So in this case, I'm only interested in this. I'm only interested in, hey, given, um, I'm only interested in tapping on equalizer to nothing else. I'm only interested in in um, being on this page, and these are the things I'm interested on. So, this is the high level BDD test. The good thing about it is, engineers are free, are free to actually change the design of the page, but the value of this still remains. How you interact with the page still remains. For example, a, a user registration form, I would express the, the lines over here as 
when I enter, when I, when I select um, Mr. as my designation. So how Mr. is being represented on screen doesn't matter. When you change the UI, you just have to change how the, the, next, the next line, how the steps are being executed. So the steps are over here are being expressed. We need to register the steps into the Cucumber system. And usually it's uh, with text and with some regular expression. And we take the regular expression to to know what how we want to in, what we want to interact. So in this case, for the regular expression, it's just a text. And then what I do, I use the page object model, very common in UI testing frameworks. Um, and then I'll just say tap poster with the text. So again, um, be, it's not just about writing. Hey, then I tap this, then I do this, then I do this, then I scroll this. You want to capture something meaningful. So let's say if the page is very long, the mobile app screen is very long, I'm oh, sorry, the user, user registration screen is very long and it requires the user to scroll. What we want to do is um, we might want to express, for example, the should see to be able to auto scroll. Then that's become, that step becomes more complicated, but at least it extracts um, that um, unneeded value out of this screen. Because what we want to do when you come to this screen, we only want to see these values. We're not really interested about scrolling. So, um, you guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So this is the screen. So, we, so in the steps, the English text are exp will be, will, will have regular expressions and then we try to run some actions on it. And this is a page object model. So in the page object model, there is a, a, every screen is identifiable, have an identifiable screen. And why, when I tap on, when I say tap on upcoming, what does it mean? I'm actually saying that, hey, I want to bind the word, the string upcoming over here to an actual, um, actual <laughs> variable, which, are, which is tied to what, to an element on screen which is at the bottom upcoming button. Yep. And this, when I try, before that, when I try to say tap poster, the second function, and this is what I will do, I actually um, use the native testing framework queries to actually get the element and then come into the last part over here, just dot tap. So this is of course very specific to the testing framework that you, you use. Okay. So over here, why BDD? Firstly, it's easy to understand the value. We do, are not distracted by how many times you swipe just to see. So we want to express it in this way. Um, of course, with that, it's good to actually lock behavior test. Um, I use this, as you see, in um, contract testing as well as mock response test. And there's something that I'm very interested to... I've tried out before, wasn't successful, and I'll try it again. Uh, acceptance test-driven development. So for the, this use case, I want to lock down the behavior in a test, make the test fail, and tell the project manager, tell the QA, hey, don't bother even taking the phone to test until I get this BDD test passing. So let it fail, and the engineer's goal is to get it to at least minimally pass. Yeah. So let's revisit E2E issue, issues. So um, these are the issues that I've shown before. Um, because end-to-end -end tests are fragile, we can introduce um, like mock response tests to actually decouple, decouple um, all the de dependencies, as well as to, as well as to be able to test all test cases because we can actually mock all the states of the environment. For the long feedback loop, um, one of the things we can introduce contract test, where you can see just four four scenarios I have. I've, I took about four seconds, five seconds. Um, from my experience, probably if you can run as many things as possible and concurrent, maybe within five minutes of contract test, you can execute and uh, validate your system. And of course, replayability. So um, mock response tests, or even the, the method you described, um, is very suitable to, to be run, um, to be, this test are, are suitable to run at uh, pull request level because it's very deterministic and replayable, repeatable. 
uh, tests are written after features are done up. So now with this test, you can actually start writing tests beforehand. Okay, so here are some of the links. Um, I actually written some BDD tests a long time back. This is a GitHub repository. Um, of course, these are more centered on iOS development. So this is about Cucumberish. Um, yeah, um, any questions? I'm done for today. Any questions? Okay, thank you.